Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Josephine Wai, Director of Asian Cultural Council, ACC. And um, tonight, I am thrilled to welcome everybody for our debut collaboration with the Asia Society. For the past 30 years, ACC has supported some of our best international artists from China and Hong Kong. And in the ACC Asia Society series on the arts, we're going to feature uh, some of our outstanding alumni and they will be sharing their fantastic arts and achievements with our friends at the Asia Society. And um, in, on this tonight occasion, to celebrate the International Women's Day, we are going to begin our collaboration with a celebration of women in the arts, and specifically fascinating, 16 fascinating women artists featured in Michelle Wasper's new book, Creating Across Culture, Women in the Arts, from China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. These fabulous ladies came from the greater China region, and they have made pioneering venture in the arts, overcome limitations and difficulties with courage and grace. And ACC is very fortunate that we are able to support them to the United States for a fellowship at an important juncture of the career. So tonight, you will experience the captivating artistry of six amazing ladies, of six amazing ACC women. So without further ado, let's begin the presentation and please enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. 
Waiting for the first beam of light is a performative project. The title symbolizes a call for patience and faith in the dream of a brighter future. It was selected to take part in Yuko Ono's verbal event, Morning Peace 2015, which was organized by the Museum of Modern Art in New York the event connected artists from seven countries over 24 hours, coincide with the summer solstice. 14 artists and art lovers to share a meditative sunrise gathering on the roof of the West Kowloon Cultural District temporary office in complete silence. The participants reflected their experience in sketches and words. Special coffee was served. Tonight, we will see an abbreviated version of the original eight minute video, which created as the permanent documentation of this artistic project. Oh. 
Thank you, thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Michelle Vosper, the editor of Creating Across Cultures. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, and thank our three performers. Wu Na, who has come from Beijing to take part in the performance this evening. <laughs> Wen Hui, also from Beijing. <laughs> Wei Chu Yin from Hong Kong. For those of you who are familiar with the repertoire of the Guqin, you will know that it's quite unusual to have dance improvisation uh, at, the, at the same time as the, as the uh, Guqin is being performed. And I might guess that it might be the first time that this has ever happened. <laughs> it could be. So this is an improvised piece that is based on a classic from the Guqin repertoire that dates back to the Three Kingdoms period. And it is written by a very famous master of the Guqin. Uh, and the piece is called, in, in case you couldn't read your programs, uh, The Drunkard. And so it's a piece which uh, uh, a very famous master, uh, in order to uh, escape from the politics of the day, went on a 60-day drinking binge as an excuse. And so this, that's what this piece is based upon, with our improv uh, dancers joining. So it's very exciting for me to be on stage tonight uh, to see the book which we have all collaborated on, written together, uh, to come to, li to life on, on stage. Uh, up until now, it's all been on, on paper, on the page, and uh, so it's wonderful for us all to get together. And uh, so I'd like to introduce everyone. First of all, Pisoy Sio, who is our performer from the first part of the program. And I'd also like to introduce the visual artists from Hong Kong who presented the two works which we saw this evening. Choi Yen Chi, who's a very prominent artist in Hong Kong. Jaffa Lam. Thank you all for this beautiful program this evening and quite unusual also. Uh, with us this evening are also several other friends. First of all, Zhang Wing Ang from Hong Kong is also in a book. That she's Hong Kong's leading playwright. We like to say for International Women's Day, something very special about Hong Kong, where women actually have a lot of power, is uh, Zhang Wing Ang here as the leading playwright. is just known as a playwright. No one calls her a woman playwright. So I think Hong Kong may be ahead of a lot of places. Uh, also with us this evening, uh, I'd like to introduce two friends who are also in chapters of the book, who've flown in especially for this occasion, Tian Mansha, who is a performer of Sichuan Opera, flew in very late last night from Shanghai. Liao Wen, who is a curator and art critic, uh, came from Beijing just to take part in this happy occasion tonight, to meet everyone else in the book. And uh, I'd also like to introduce one of our writers is here, came back for this occasion, Christina Jung, who, who wrote two articles on Liao Wen and uh, another artist. And even our editor flew all the way in from New Haven to take part so that she could finally meet all the women that she was editing, uh, Mary Child. So for this evening's performance, I'd like to especially thank the Asian Cultural Council, which really was enormously helpful in coordinating this program, which is quite an unusual program. And uh, so a special thanks to Josephine Wai, the director of the Asian Cultural Council in Hong Kong, Kathy Yip, and Gabriel So. Thank you for all that I have put you through in the last couple of days. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you. When the ACC gets together, it's uh, often people say it's very much like a family. And uh, there's really a sense of kinship amongst all the ACC grantees, which I am one, actually. I received a grant in 1984. Uh, so people, uh, the grantees are always so generous and helpful to, to come out and, and help with whatever program we do. Psyche Trey, who I'm afraid isn't here with us, but is really Hong Kong's leading lighting designer. And she helped to just do all of the lighting, because this kind of a space is not really for dance. So we'd like to thank uh, Psyche in her absence and her students who are here to help also. So uh, Jose, Ho, and uh, her students, thank you so much for turning this space into a dance space. 
we all know the very famous phrase that be behind all successful women are men. So we do have to thank a few men. We must confess they were very important to this project also. Uh, Frank, Frank uh, Proctor, our publisher, has supported and sponsored the uh, performances this evening and brought in the performers from outside of Hong Kong. Thank you so much, and thank you for being our publisher. And very important to me is our project manager, P.Y. Lau, who has put up with me for more than four years as we work on this project, who is just completely indispensable. So men can be very useful. I would like to point that out. Thank you so much, P.Y., forever. The Chinese have a, a, an expression that, sorry, that have an expression that when you drink water, you should remember the source. So tonight we are extremely thankful to Desiree and Hans Michael Jebsen for sponsoring this book because we could never have done it without you. Thank you so much. Here we all thank you. And thank you for bringing us all together. I mean, the book itself, I see it as just a stepping stone to something much more important, which is really bringing women together in the arts. So perhaps the next one will be women in the arts from Brazil or wherever that could be, because we really enjoy getting together. <laughs> so thank you so much to Desiree and Hans Michael Jepsen. Um, today, Liao Wen showed a few words. We had lunch together uh, with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jepsen, and Liao Wen pointed out in, in thanking Michael for his generosity, she said, um, you know, in the world, there are many women, many men who like women, but there are actually not that many who really support women. And so we'd like to especially thank you for that. So thank you from all of us. Thank you. So I would like to invite Hans Michael Jebsen to come on stage and say a few words. Thank you so much. Well, what can I say? <laughs> I'm <clears throat> really short of words. On International Women's Day, I can only say congratulations. You know, Women's Day is every day when I look around here. Um, my role is really to, to say a very big thank you, first of all, to our guests and patrons. Nothing would happen in this world of the Asia Society and the ACC without your great support. And of course, you know, it's wonderful to see the Asia Society and the ACC logos shoulder to shoulder because what uh, you know, of course, is that John D. Rockefeller is the founder of both uh, these societies that have been established at a time of great conflict and polarization, um, which reminds us of the importance of creating bridges, cultural bridges, and probably that's just as important now as it was in the 1960s. In fact, it was the Vietnam War that was the conflict that made the um, birth hour of the Asia Society and the Asia, uh, 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 Asian Cultural Council uh, so um, very much um, acutely important then. Now, uh, today is so very special because about four or five years ago, I remember when Michelle was setting her sails towards the fox farm, to be exact, um, and you will read it in the back of uh, her book where it says uh, that she is now a writer and consultant living on a farm um, in New Jersey, um, that um, this project was born and um, I feel a, a trifle guilty saying, why don't you do a book? as if that's so easy. In fact, it's not a book, it's 16 books in one. And to be a co-author and a mastermind and an editor um, is not an easy business as everybody found out. But I think the result is anything but, you know, um, um, the achievement of um, anything but mean proportion, simply mesmerizing, as mesmerizing as the performance, I think, of our artists here tonight, to see a Gu Qing played in, in a contemporary fashion together with dance. I mean, who can do that? But the um, artists here tonight uh, who are... Um, ACC grantees at the Asia Society. And by the way, thank you so much um, 
Alice to allow us to be here tonight. This is uh, very gracious of the Asia Society. You have 250 events every year. This is really colossal. This is like a 24-hour rock-around-the-clock circus. And I think whenever you come uh, to this place, you see how active uh, this place is, whether that is art exhibitions, whether that is political exchange forums. Um, you never leave the Asia Society without being greatly enriched in in one way <clears throat> or the other. And um, this is really a labor of love of all concern. <clears throat> but back to the book. Um, you know, this is something which hasn't happened before. And I, I can't emphasize enough um, how unique the situation is. And I think whenever we are low in Hong Kong and we think, you know, we've uh, seen the best of, you know, um, the Pearl of the Orient, I think we should remind ourselves how important uh, this place is where we have such an enormous opportunity uh, meeting not only kindred spirits, but meeting people from all over the place, of really creating something which is absolutely unique, and that is three things, and that's this amazing goodwill. And I learned two things from Michel, and that is, first of all, that diversity is real, diversity is strength, and that the real wealth of nation is really in human capital. And that's something I learned from my attachment with the ACC through those many, many occasions where uh, Michelle and her team has been creating one sort of miracle after the other. And I'm very grateful being exposed to that. So I can recommend to all of you who are not yet members of one or the other of these organizations, <laughs> sign up. Um, it's certainly worthwhile. This is a very enriching experience. And I would like to thank you um, all the artists here tonight, and you especially, Michelle, for enriching our lives um, so uh, profoundly um, every time again. I remember, you know, when Ronald Reagan uh, visited um, the UK for the first time. By the way, they didn't have a vote to not invite him. Uh, <laughs> and he said to Mrs. Thatcher, Madam, you're a hard act to follow. I think they're going to say that about you as well. Um, you've set a very high standard with your book. I think um, whoever is going to do a similar book is going to take that as a benchmark. Um, and um, I'm sure they're going to praise you, but they're also going to uh, be a little bit aware of um, the standards that are going to apply. But I can only say one thing. Uh, this is something which is going to set a whole new perspective um, in life. And um, I think gender is one thing, but quality is really what counts. And um, you have really shown that in the arts. And I was uh, reminded today by a colleague of mine who said, in the olden days on Women's Day, women would have been you know, given free in the office. Um, I think our company would be non-functional in that case. <laughs> So I'm happy that is no longer the case. Thank you very much um, for um, enriching us all. And I'm very happy to look forward to the second edition of the book very soon. 2,000 copies printed. So get your copy fast. Thank you very much. <laughs>